the gaming industry is going to end because Power World is selling and the Suicide Squad kills the Justice League isn't. And that spells doom for the gaming industry, according to Take Him over on Twitter. Uh, however, I have a little bit of a different thought and why the gaming industry needs to follow more of the model of what the Pocket Pair team did versus what these massive studios are doing. So before we get into it, guys, do me a favor, watch this video all the way through and comment down below because I read all of your comments on my live streams every single Sunday at 11 a.m. Central. It's called Sunday Coffee, and to the best of my knowledge, not many people out there will go and read the good and the bad live on stream for your enjoyment. And if that seems like something you guys are interested, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel as well because that would really, really help me out. And honestly, it creates it's a great dialogue between us. So do me that favor and let's get into this. So obviously over the past few weeks, POW World has been the talk of the town in the gaming world for good reasons and the Suicide Squad killing the Justice League and peeing all over the Flash is the talk of the town for a bad reason. <laughs> Anyway, so take him over on Twitter posted this the other day. He said, uh, Power World is out selling Suicide Squad, a triple A title that took over a decade to make with hundreds of developers. The gaming industry is doomed. Really? Well, let's break that down a little bit. So if it really did take a decade to make, it's time to go look at some of the numbers and why the gaming industry is doomed and why I believe, um, no, we should probably fire a lot more people in the gaming industry. So if you go back and you look at the Arkham games, and again, games that I didn't play, but I looked up the numbers and to the best of my ability was able to find sources. This is Wikipedia, guys, so I do apologize, but let's take it with a grain of salt. I already know you guys are going to knock me for Wikipedia sources. However, the Arkham games were made from teams of around 40 to just over 100 people, right? They had to expand, especially with the last game being more open world and being able to travel around in that way. And that's perfectly understandable. So when you break down a lot of the numbers of the average salaries of some of these game developers and what they make, Glassdoor reports that it's anywhere between 80 to 130,000. So the average would be about $105,000 a year for the game developers. Now, obviously this takes into the course of the upper echelons of all that stuff, but just using those numbers, we can see how much smaller of a budget they have to work with when it comes to the Arkham games versus Rocksteady now having over 250 employees. If you break that down over the course of 10 years, that means that Suicide Squad killing the Justice League was about $260 million to produce. Whereas it has been reported by Pocket Pair that apparently it only cost about $6.75 million if you do the, uh, the U.S. dollar conversions to make the early release game that is taking the world by storm right now, Power World. You break all these numbers down, you figure out that they had about a dev team using the numbers that I just gave you of the average salary in the U.S. because these are just the numbers that I have to work with, breaking it down over the course of three years. You've only got a dev team of about 20 people creating this game. In addition to that, it was also released uh, that uh, Pal World was supposedly, or Pocket Pair, I should say, was supposedly considering bankruptcy. This was in another post from the developer as well. I'm sorry, I did not pull that up before I started recording this video, but it has been reported by several uh, people out there. So if they were considering going bankrupt over this thing, they were really putting everything that they could into this. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about is creative design, okay? Creative design is massive when it comes to games, and when you are developing something, you want as tight-knit of a group as possible. Now, obviously, we see numbers that are in the 250s. How much creative design, how much game of telephone gets played when it comes to a development team of that magnitude, right? It's a lot easier to really get a short, concise design and to talk with the people about the design of your game. We only have 20 people working on it versus 250. In addition to that, we also have to understand that social cohesion starts to break down around about the 150 mark. This is something that's been long standing. I forget the name of the phenomenon, but if you guys know what I'm talking about, please comment it down below for me. I just looked it up right before I recorded this and uh, my brain is doing my brain things. 
So what is actually killing the gaming industry, especially in the West? They being that pot or being that Rocksteady is a British developer. Well, they're located in London, whether they're British or not, I don't know. But what's actually killing the gaming industry? Massive, massive bloat. You see, I believe that some of these triple A gaming companies out there are actually about as big as the average American, which is not good. They need to do what they have been doing these last few years, and they need to trim some of the fat. These gaming budgets are getting absolutely massive. If it, this really did take 10 years to make, and the numbers that we have put it into the $200 million mark for this game to sell, what hope and a prayer do they have of making that kind of money? I mean, don't get me wrong, we've seen it in the past for games doing that, but it also seems like having that many people work on a project, it doesn't seem like one, creative design is going to be taken very seriously. We're going to have a lot of people who fall subpar. If you follow the 80-20 rule, you've got 20% of the people that are doing 80% of the work and 80% of the people doing 20% of the work. Why would you want that many people doing a small amount of work? Wouldn't you want your team to be more smaller and more focused? See, this is something that I don't really understand here. Why does it spell doom for the gaming industry that Pow World is doing so well on a small development team and the Suicide Squad with a large development team isn't? Why does that spell doom for the gaming world? I actually think it spells awesome news for the gaming world, but it doesn't necessarily spell awesome news for a lot of people's jobs. You see, if people realize that they can go back to the days when they made the Arkham games and they can have between 40 and 100 people creating absolutely fantastic games, which from people who I know who have played those games have said, yes, they are probably some of the best. They definitely rank up there for some of the best games that they've ever played. Why can't we get back to that? Why hire so many people and sink so much money by having all the dead weight on your team that it literally puts you in a bind and it puts you in a jam when it comes to making your money back? That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. And I don't know about you guys, but if the game development world is in trouble because we have to have lean, mean, creative teams again, I don't know. I think that's something that I would actually appreciate. Anyway, guys, let me know, as I said before, what you think in the comments below, because I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this subject. Do you guys think that AAA developing uh, companies, AAA development companies are overbloated? Do you think that they have too many people on staff, too many useless people on staff? Do you think that the gaming world needs to see AAA developers get back to being smaller companies running on leaner budgets and ultimately where the creative design can be heard and have a lot less input on uh, by a lot fewer people? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, cheers, everybody.